Hey, welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. I guess I'm kicking it off today. Do it, man. That's all you. <laughs> uh, I just kind of took charge there. I like it. I like a take charge kind of fella. Yeah. So just a minute ago, before we like launched into your stealing the show, yeah. you said you graduated from ministry school how long ago? Nine years ago. So nine years ago, about now, you graduated ministry school. Mm -hmm. Do you feel any smarter? No. Not smarter today than then? No. Why? Um, because I already had my doctorate in... <laughs> Chair straightening. Okay, go. So, That's like, awesome. once you get to doctorate, like, there's not much more you can do. Dude, I had my chair straightening uh, degree in the first grade. Wow. Stripling Elementary. Yeah. Ruth Petrie. Wow. Gave me a, an award. My mother still has it. <laughs> it says to Charles Mark Evans, official chair straightener, Stripling Elementary School. Gas. Yeah, I think we need to get her to frame that. We need to hang I've up got with your other degrees. I've got it framed. Yeah, my nice. mom has it framed. Official chair straightener. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's, That's awesome. why I've come so far yeah. in life. You just peaked in first grade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so thank you so much for going to ministry school, and thank you for planning your life here, helping inspire other people to read the Bible. It works. It does work. We're inspiring it's people powerful. to do it, and I thank you. Here's just a few things as we wrap up Revelation this week. First, if you'll just read it, you're blessed, yep. and we hope you know that. That. We yes. hope you understand that just by reading it aloud, you'll be blessed. Then we came to this thought, if God be for me, who can be against me? And who could? Maybe Jesus. Maybe Jesus could be against us. So it's been very touching. And uh, so I want to pull out some things because we're going we're gonna to flip it 180 degrees today. Listen to this because okay. this, this inspires me. So chapter 2, and I'm going to go into verse 2. So I'm going to jump from verse to verse, but just... And pull some things out. Chapter 2, verse 2. Jesus, I know your works. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. To him who overcomes, I will give. Verse 9. The church at Smyrna. I know your works. Verse 10. But if you're faithful to death, I will give you. Church of Pergamons. I know your works. Verse 17. If you'll overcome, I will give. 19, to the church at Thyatira, I know your works. Verse 26, if you'll overcome and keep my words to the end, I will give. And yeah. so this is what I want to end with today. Not only is Jesus a, can be against us, he rewards us for the good, man. That's right. That's good. He just rewards you for good. Amen. And I think that kind of blows people's minds right. maybe because we, well, I'm not all about works. Yeah. But we're not talking about works for salvation. Right. We're talking about works for reward. Yeah. You know, not just if you're a person of works, you get saved. But there is no denying what Scripture teaches. And I think that's why Romans and the book of James are so controversial. Because Romans just leaves nothing you got to do. Yeah. You just believe. And James, come in and James comes in and teaches, okay, well, you got faith. Mm -hmm. But show me your faith without your works. Yeah. Show me. I need to see it. Faith without works is, is dead. dead. Is dead. Right. So the truth of the matter is, even a person who believes produces works. It it's an outflow. Right. And Jesus, Jesus kind of affirms it. Yeah. He affirms that. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, I will give to you. Yeah. If I know what you're doing, mm -hmm. I see all the good you do. I see everything you're doing. I also see all the bad you do. Yeah, right. And then he uses this phrase to all seven churches. You have to hear me, the Spirit, and you have to overcome. Hmm. And so it's not just about let me go to church, cross my fingers. Yeah. Jesus wants me to overcome. Right. He wants my life to overcome. So in your perspective, Bible school student from nine years ago, what do you think it means when Jesus says you have to overcome? He's obviously not talking about there, right? Because that's the end result of the reward, right? If you overcome, then you get all this stuff. Yep. So there's this. I know what you're doing. I know mm -hmm. your good stuff. Yep. And I know your bad stuff. But if you overcome, I'm going to reward you greatly, right? So, so then, right, stuck in the middle of good and bad, Mark Evans, who does good, or maybe some bad, the Mark who runs after God versus the Mark who needs to repent. Mm -hmm. Stuck in the middle of that and being rewarded by God yep. is hey, you're going to have to overcome. I'll take it all the way back to Galatians chapter five. Okay, when we studied that. Okay, that you have these two. The it's the war that he 
that is described in there, the war of the flesh versus the war of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, I've I've explained it this way, uh, especially to the middle schoolers, is that we have a garden of the flesh and a garden of of the spirit, Mm -hmm. of, of life and death. And every human being is in the middle, and there's this constant battle going back and forth. Well, I want to... And, you know, Paul said it, I, I do what I don't want to do and what I don't want to do, I do. And right. so it's just this constant battle back and forth. And so if you can realize that every human being is going on, uh, this is going on, well, to overcome you, you step into the mm-hmm. into the spirit, right? Mm-hmm. You step into the garden of life. Mm-hmm. So, and I think the only way to do that is to hook your life up to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's good. And he says that if you have ears to hear, hear what the spirit says to the church and you'll overcome. Yep. I think there's no denying, um, no denying this, that for a Christian to overcome, two things are, well, I'm going to go three. Three things are critical. Number one, the Word of God needs to be able to reprove you, rebuke you, challenge you, and grow you. Yes. you got to have that kind of relationship with the Word, like Jesus said. My, I'm, I'm going to fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Right. So if I want to be a Christian that has an overcoming life on this planet, with the potential of reward that will come, then first and foremost, I've got to come to the Bible for more than just a devotion. You know, I did my devotion, check the box. Right. Uh, you know, I did my proverb today. I have to come to the Bible and go, God, whatever you want to say to me today, rebuke me today, challenge me today. May it be so. And, you know, we joke about it a lot, but I've been reading the Bible 30 years straight, right? right Every right. single day. Yeah. Um, I didn't start out to do it that way. It just ended up, it it kind of just, I was so deep into it. I thought, <laughs> well, I don't want to blow it now, right? <laughs> right? Like I had been reading it so long, yeah. I finally thought, well, I might need to keep up with this. Like right. I've never even thought about that. So now it's not, it's meaningful to me that I haven't really missed a day of reading the word. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that my life has always gone well. Right. And it doesn't mean that I haven't done some stupid stuff that I regret. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think if I'm not careful I can just read it for the sake of reading it, yeah. you know? So what I try to do, and this is going to sound silly. I mean, I read more off my phone now because it's easier to see at night and I read when I go to bed, mm-hmm. but I, I'll, I'll take my phone or the Bible and, and I'll just kind of lay my head there a minute and I'll say, God, and I'll close my eyes almost every night. And I just say, God, whatever you want to tell me tonight, just tell me where to read. Yeah. You know, you tell me where to read. I, I, I can read a plan, mm-hmm. but I want the God that wrote the Bible to yeah. tell Mark Evans where to read. It's good. And then I say this, and whatever you want to tell me, whatever you want to say, if you want to rebuke me or encourage me, may my heart be open. Yeah. And then I just wait for about 30 seconds, and sometimes passages of Scripture jump up, mm-hmm. and I turn it and read it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get nothing, I read anyway. Yeah. But I think that's one way I've taught myself to overcome. It's good. Is it God, don't just bless me with the Bible, but if I need to be rebuked, rebuke me with it. Yep. Second thing is this. He says, if you want to overcome, you have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I think an overcoming life, my opinion, you have to be plugged into a body. Yeah. You have to be part of a community. You have to. You can't just, I'm going to go ever, ever so often. Yeah, right. Uh, and I will say this, across the board... Over my 30 years of being in ministry, those who have hungrily plugged into God, yes. been involved in his house, right. tithed, served his house, um, their lives fare better, yeah. which is weird. It is. And I'm not saying that there's not times we can get abused by leaders or hurt by leaders. I mean, we're people. I'm just talking across the board in general. The local church was designed by Jesus to help me overcome. Right. So why wouldn't the devil try to use it to sink me? Right. Get me frustrated. I'm going to quit. All preachers are this. Christians are that. Mm -hmm. Because it's so powerful. The way you're going to overcome is my word. The way you're going to overcome is my body. And so the way you're going to overcome is my spirit. So those three things, the word, the church, and the spirit, are how you and I overcome today. And yet I feel like all of them are under an attack. Yeah. I feel like the word is under an attack. It just, is it really what it is? Is it really genuine? Is it really the word of God? I feel like local churches are under an attack. Yeah. You can't trust preachers. We're all just, 
you know, we're people. Uh, it's just kind of more like a club or an experience, or we even use those words, you know, like an experience. And I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, sure. I want to experience God, but it's not just an experience I'm after. It's a home, yeah, a spiritual home yes. where I can be rebuked and I can hear what God wants to say to the right. home, not just me individually, the home in general. Yeah. And then, gosh, just hanging out with people that help me know how to hear the Spirit. Right. You know, my mom and dad spoke this weekend uh-huh. here at the church. Yep. And every that, my dad's 84. <laughs> every time he speaks, I just go, gosh, i got such a long way to go. <laughs> right? Right. Because he inspires me. My mom inspires me. When I hear people that have served God 40, 50, 60 years yes. of their life, right. 70 years, I'm just like blown away like, God, I want that kind of faith to overcome. Right. So I think those three things, I think the local church, being involved to a healthy community, and by involved, I mean like consistently plugged in. I think that the Word of God being part of your daily life of devotion to God, Lord, whatever you want to say to me, say it. Yes. Good or bad, rebuke me if you need to. And then just having people in my life that can hear the Spirit. And it can teach me how to hear the Spirit and can show me how like an Ed Saxon or like you do with all these young people that you're, you know, kind of mentoring and discipling today. Yeah, I think it takes that to overcome. And I think Jesus says, man, Mark, I want to reward you for the good you do. Right. And yet sometimes I have that feeling of, does it really pay off? Yeah, right. (laughs) I know you and I've talked about that a lot. Yeah. Is all this effort you put forth to the kingdom, is it really worth it? Yeah. You know, and... And so I think I just have to measure things other than just visual success, but obedience. And am I doing what God wants me to do? Amen. That's powerful. God's going to reward you one day, man. Kind of like a Kroger plus shopping cart. Boom. I Ten cents one. off Ten cents after off. 100 points. Come on, Woo. man. All the time. I'm saving on donuts every single week. <laughs> Revelation chapter 3, next week, we're going to pull out the other churches uh, that Jesus is going to come to again. And it's weird, the same thing next week. Hey, I know this about you. I know this about you and that, good and bad. Mm-hmm. Here's what I want to encourage you with. Jesus is passionate about his church. And I pray you get passionate about it as well. And I pray that he gives you a passion for his people on this planet we call Earth so we can build His kingdom. Ryan and I love you. We're so glad you tune in with us. We hope you're reading the Bible every single day, zero excuse. We want to encourage you to jump into Revelation chapter 3. And remember, send us your questions. We will do our best to answer them for you. Have a great weekend. We love you. Mm